much a panner on our list. They are owned by the same uh, people as um, the cult we had here a little while ago. Anyway, they're Irish draft bred. The, the chestnut is out of a hand for me with an Irish draft. That's an Irish purebred Irish sports horse, the grey. So Irish draft sports horse, I should say. So what I'm doing today is trying to explain something to you. This lovely little chestnut horse is real, you know, wants to do her job and get on with it. So if we look down here at these buckles, so we've got adjustment on the end of our tracing. So obviously we've got buckles where we adjust, yeah? Now. So if I ask this all to come up a bit, you can see the buckles are more or less running level. Yeah? And I need to pull there across. More or less. So as long as they're within four inches either side, so one forward four inches, you know, in front of the other one is fine. Back four inches is alright, obviously. If they went like that one, like now for instance, I'm trying to hold them there to show you. One is forward four inches, one is back then because they're not level. But if there's that sort of tolerance in the way the harness has been put on the horses. They've got that sort of tolerance, but they're both sharing the weight. So what I've done, I've taken the coupling reins. So the coupling reins are the reins that cross and go through that little ring on the pole. I'll talk about that in a minute. But So what I've done is I've got lots and lots of holes in this rein. Can you see there? this side of the buckle and in that side I've got none at all right so I've got my coupling reins i.e. I'm putting more pressure on this horse not pressure I don't um, we don't do that right so not not pressure so you see well, I've proved to you what I mean so I've got a thumb and forefinger and I can hold that horse there both of them like that with the, with the buckles as I say, you know, just with them two fingers, well, there's no one out, no matter how strong you are, in your hands that can hold, you know, you can't apply a lot of pressure before you slip. So, the reins that cross, because I've adjusted and I've let this one come all the way back, the coupling rein connected to this rein is all the way back. And this one is all the way forward with the holes that are provided on the reins you know, when they were purchased. Now, we sometimes will alter the reins. So by that, I mean, we'll add some more holes, etc. other bits of paper. But basically, I've got more pressure on the chestnut than I have on the grey horse. At the mo this moment in time, I'm not really bothered about the grey horse pointing its nose because I know it will carry its head where I want to when I ask it. I'm certainly not bothered about the chestnut um, in any way, you know, not having a nice head coach. Got a lovely head coach and very soft in the mouth and they're only in soft rubber bits. So by shortening the coupling rein on here and letting it out on this one, I'm giving that much more rain, probably as much as 11 inches. Maybe, yeah, we can actually measure it in a minute with a tape and see what it is. So the reins on the chestnut are shorter than they are on the grey horse. So that ring on there, a lot of people ask what that's for. So there's a ring, you can see it. it's got a couple of rollers on it as well. Um, so the ring's there on a piece of bungee connected to the pole. The reason we have that, you can have a running ring on anyway, you know, on the crossover of the coupling reins. A lot of people do. A lot of people I'll see uh, um, out in Europe, they'll have a bone on there, you know, like a, a round bone from a um, and polished on there, that type of thing as well. But basically, why we have it is we have plenty of room behind when we're training young horses for two reasons. One, if they do put a buck in or they're a little bit silly or like that, you've got more room in which to, you know, sort things out behind them. The other thing is you can see how they're going. So I can look down at their feet and see how they're going. I'm just bringing this motor car on past here. Oh, 
Yeah. So see how nicely they stand together. And they work together nicely, don't get me wrong, they work together nicely, but the, the chestnut is more, come on, let's get on with it. Now, we broke these as tandem, or trained them if you like, gentle them, whatever you want to call it, schooled them, as tandem, pair, and single. So they're doing three different jobs uh, in their harness. So it's hard, if you look down here now, it's a lovely thing, you see the grey horse there with its leg at rest, yeah? which is lovely. So standing there, you can see the hip drop completely relaxed. And he also stands on three legs, don't intend going anywhere at all. So the purpose of what we're doing is I've got a little bit more restraint, but not pulling, you know, there's no good pulling back. It's, you know, all you've got to do is make the horse's mouth hard. So what I've done is I'm more or less driving one horse, if you like, I know that sounds a little bit silly, but if this horse goes up, the reins are firmer, certainly not tight. You know, you'll see the reins move all the time. Good morning. <laughs> you'll see the uh, the reins, you know, are moving all the time. They've got a bit of float in them when we're, we're driving. But these horses here, yeah, they've, they've been with us a little while now because they're doing all these, and they're being ridden as well. So they've had lots of different disciplines while they're here. All I want to do now is just ask this chestnut, and the whole purpose of what I'm explaining is just take it steady. There's no need to race on. You haven't got to go fast. You don't have to take all the weight yourself, yeah? That's only because she's young. She thinks, oh, come on, let's get going and, and do. So that's basically what we're doing. That's the whole point of what I'm trying to explain to you. But there's something else you can do on the billet. So the billet of the rain is where it passes through the bit. Germany, um, I've seen quite a few sets of German harness where they have the billet is completely detachable from the reins. So it's a stretch of leather, maybe 14 inches long, maybe longer, 16. It's got holes punched in it and it's obviously got a hole to punch so you can secure it to the rein and then you pass the rest of it through the bit and back through and secure it again to form the loop on the end of the rein. So I'll, I'll show you one at home when we, when we get home, you know, so I can explain. So this is lovely. It's a big old truck coming round. They take no notice at all. Still got his leg at rest. So that's all we're doing. So just a quick recap. The coupling reins have been shortened and lengthened so that this horse has more connection with the bit. Just to ask her, when she's working in a pair, she wants to do all the work. You know, she'd quite happily say to the chestnut one, leave it to me, I'll do it, it's fine. It's no good. You know, they've got the, the point of having a, a pair of horses is, is to work as one. That's what we're looking for and she won't do that she will but we're just asking her now pay attention darling you know just listen to me we don't need to go like that you can go a little bit slower this horse will, will then be able to go forward and fill the collar and go to work horse doesn't pull a cart if he does you tie his tail on the cart when if he's actually pulling the cart what he does is push a collar and that's very important to understand so when you push a collar forward in turn pulls the cart so that means if you've got one horse doing all the work then this horse say the grey horse in this case wouldn't have any weight on his collar so why, why would it push it forward why would it apply its, its body weight to it to push it forward it wouldn't do so that's what we're trying to to, to get done here and this is another another bit of a lesson if you like you know we're standing here quiet we've had a lorry we've had a car come past a couple of bits and pieces. So we've had a, a car come past. We've got um, a bigger shell thing there. Can he, can he get past? Mm -hmm. Okay. Whoop! Whoop! What is it? Coming round here. Steady, baby. So you can see this horse now, we've just come round the corner and it's jig jogging. That one's walking.
and it's big jogging. So, oh, stand still, baby. And this lorry can come past now. We couldn't get past around the bend as well, so you see that old lorry there. Tanker delivering oil to houses, that'll be doing. And a few motor cars behind it. And they stand nice. So you can see as a pair, they, they're happy with each other. They're not biting, arguing, or, you know, doing anything at all. They're quite happy with each other's company. Walk. And they'll walk away when they're told. Like that. So when I left home, which is a mile actually, to the, that turning we just turned down, and all the way down, this chestnut's been jig jogging along, you know. <laughs> he didn't want to walk, he wanted to jig jog. Let me get on, I can do this on my own. I don't need that other one. <laughs> there she is. So, a good thing to do as well when you get all like that is to stop. You see it now, look. Just wanting to get on a little bit more. But I don't want to change the bit, which 90% of people would do, or drop it down on the slot and apply more pressure to the horse's mouth on a cantilever bit. All these are is straight snapples, snapple, they a straight bar snapple, and it's just rubber. Inside the rubber, it's got a, normally a wire bond, you know, a piece of something to, you know, just in case they bit through it, you'd have no bit at all, so it's got to have some reinforcing inside, but it's flexible. You can actually bend it with two fingers, you know, if you get the two rings on your fingers, like you could bend it right in half, you know? So you can see this, Little chestnut horse, she's what we call busy, you know, it, wants, it just wants to get on and do everything. Now, to restrain its mouth with a cantilever bit, like a Liverpool so called driving bit, so called, right? Um, so you'd have some, you could drop it down on the slots, you could go rough check, all sorts of different things that you could do, you could have a curve chain on. But I'd sooner just get her to. Do what I asked her to do, working alongside her mate, and realising that she hasn't got to do all the work. And you see, my buckles are still level. Not be Tracy, so they're sharing the work. Got to be obvious, common sense, isn't it? That they're sharing the work because all the traces are the same length. Also, what I've done here, I haven't got an equaliser on this vehicle. Yeah. So what I've done is taken the traces and cross them over. Obviously, when the grey horse pulls forward, he's pulling on her swingle tree, yeah, and vice versa. So it acts somewhat like an equaliser. Not as good as an equaliser, but it acts somewhat like it. So if I can get, so now, for instance, this buckle here is back a bit. So if I can start the grey horse to go up a bit, yeah, I'll come back. So if I just, you know, come over there, don't you? So you can see there, they're more or less. I'm level there. Um, now, Daddy baby, daddy my darling baby, that's my sugar plum, that's my baby girl, just walk my darling, just walk, just walk, so I'm going to demonstrate now, you can see, no matter how I hold these reins, oh she's come back, she's going to come back, good, almost there, daddy, but I want you to see that the reins are not, not I'm not applying, you know, a massive amount of strength pulling back the reins. You can see her working her mouth, look, her lip, you know, and she's licking her lips and like that. So she's not got the tongue being compressed by the bit and all that nonsense. So she's just going sweet there. So what I'm going to do now, because she won't walk, it's almost there, she's walking now, right? And then she starts jig jogging again. <laughs> They make me laugh. Whoa! Stand still, my babies. Stand still, my babies. Yes, you are. Walk now. Walk. Walk. Come 
over there, but And it's almost like with a, I wouldn't say it was nerves particularly, like these dogs running out and barking, it's not bothered about that. I'm just saying, I want to get on, I can do this, you know, so what we've got to do is just be patient, as patient as you can possibly be. Take your time, keep stopping and restarting, that's a good thing. Um, let's get her to go away at the walk. They're sharing the load, but she's got to do it, jig jogging. She can't do it just walking. She will do it, she'll come to walking, but that's the purpose of this whole thing. So, we've shortened a couple of reins and let the couple of rain out. Yeah. So, they're completely opposite the reins, applying a little bit more pressure onto the, the chestnut also. Yeah. So, we're holding her from getting right up. If I was to let them reins go, you see, look, she would be straight away there, look, getting on with the job, you know. And trying to take all the work away from the other horse. Steady, steady, my little sugar. Steady, baby. Steady, baby. So I'm just trying to teach her. I hope I've explained that properly, you know. You know, I'm doing my best to concentrate on what I'm doing and explain what I'm doing at the same time which is not not the best and I should be just concentrating on the horses but so many people have asked that have had this type of problem so that's how I deal with it most people 90% I'll just tighten the reins up I've heard shorten the traces that's a load of nonsense you know if I can shorten the traces to load more weight um you know I've heard all sorts of things done well if you shorten the trace you've got to adjust the reins because obviously if you bring the horse back here six inches by shortening the reins the reins have got to be six inches too long if they was correct in the first place for steering obviously that wouldn't be right would it because you've moved you've held the horse back and you've brought his, the whole body back i mean the whole body including his head and his mouth have come back so if, if the reins were right before then if you move it back six inches, six inches They've got to be at six inches of slack, obvious. So, what I'm saying is, you get these, come up there, dog. When you want that finer adjustment, which I would like now, I can't do any more than the holes that are provided in the reins. So this particular set of reins, I've got other reins at home that we've modified, have got a lot more holes in. But I know that this horse will walk with these reins and with this setup. So I don't want to do any more than, than what I'm doing. The only thing I would like to do, if the billets were separate, I'll show you one so you understand, you know, what I mean. I'm, I'm not being talking down to people, but not everybody would understand. So the billet comes completely away. So you've got a, a, a length of rein with a buckle on the end sewn on. There's nothing else there. So there's no tongue to put through the bit. So that comes as a separate entity. So it's fixed the, uh, you know, by a hole, like any other buckle fixes to anything. And uh, so there she is walking now. On a slack rein, can you see what I'm saying? Still breaking a little tiny bit, but basically she's walking, but it's slack. I'm not holding her, holding her back, am I? I'm trying to teach her to do it, you know, with a gentle touch, gentle as you can possibly be, and get her to do it. If I had, going back to the reins again, sorry, so the billet on the end is two ends, you've got the rein, your billet is separate, but the billet, therefore, might be 16, 16 inches long. It's going to be folded in half, which makes it eight inches long. Yep. It will still buckle up into and secure in exactly the same way as the standard one does. But then you've got a lot more room to punch some more holes in. I mean, a lot more room. So you can have a finer adjustment up the front. You can do it with, a, with most sets of reins. Normally will accommodate another hole. So that was a car shoot come past. He, he went right past right and then accelerated away making a funny noise but you know they're not bothered at all 
but it made him look round. I thought there was something wrong with the car. <laughs> so here we go, just walking nice and slow now. Walk on, walk on. That's it. Now we're going to have a little trot. Trot, babies. Trot, trot. Up you come. Come on, trot. And oh, that's lovely, buckles running together. So, everything just sweet. They're not actually pulling any weight, the vehicle um, is rolling it along on its own. So, I hope I've explained that properly. If you didn't understand, then please comment and would you please uh, like and share the videos that we do. They take a lot of effort and a lot of time to do it. Um, and we only do it because people like watching. So if you could press the like button and subscribe and share, I'll be most grateful. And the more people that see it, the more questions we get, which is great. You know, new people to the channel. We've got 22 million hits on YouTube. I think it is 46 or 7,000 subscribers. But the more people that... Um, come on the better isn't it, obviously because then there's more questions more and I don't mind if someone's got a, you know a, uh, an opinion I'd love it and that's fine we only ever learn any of us only ever learn by listening yeah watching and learning you know as much as you can and I'm learning every day and you can learn off of, off of someone um, that will come up with an idea they probably never drove horse in their life but they'll sit up here with me and Maybe their wife or husband, the driver, and they'll sit up here and on the carriage and say, why don't you do that then? And I think to myself, I don't know why we don't, but it's a good idea. And that's that more than once, you know. So you try it. So they're going along happy, they're not uptight or anything. They're both lovely horses in their own right. They seriously are lovely horses in their own right. You know, you see them under saddle and tandem and all sorts. So I hope I've explained that well. As I say, at the risk, risk of repeating myself, if you'd like, share and subscribe, it would be great. The more people we can get, um, I'm getting on in years now, and I don't know how much longer I want to go on forever driving, of course, but that don't happen for anybody, does it? So, yeah, the more people we do, and the more comments, questions, lovely. We always do our utmost to... Um, you know, to answer, <laughs> we do the utmost. Reed does our utmost to answer all the uh, all the questions we get and inquiries, etc., and, and like that. And then sometimes, if it's um, if it's something that can't be easily explained without having a little bit no more knowledge about the horse, etc., etc., people, you know, give us a ring in the evening. You know, I mean, normally if you can get through, because a lot of people have a go, you know, a ring. And I'll answer their questions direct if I can. Okay, well, I hope that's a help for you.